John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us Land Rover Jeeps. Hmm? For God so loved the world that he gave us Mercedes Benz. Hey, talk to me, Power City. Huh? For God so loved the world that he gave us mansions. What did he give us? His only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you really love the world, what you will give them by preaching the gospel is the gift of eternal life. When you really love somebody, you want to give him the gift of eternal life. Yes. You can't say this is my best friend. And you have never preached the gospel to the person. You are a hypocrite. You are a liar. You are a big liar. Because if that person is really your best friend, the best gift of God is what you want to share. Maybe it's not your best friend. Maybe it's somebody you enjoy using. And you're using best friend to cover it up. Because if somebody is really your best friend, you want to share with the person the best gift. The best gift. The best gift. Sometimes you hear Christians and non-Christians having the same ideology. It baffles me. The same ideology. They will tell you what is the high point of Christianity. What is the high point of Christianity? Is it not if you have two clothes you share one with your neighbor? That ideology you have three shoes you share two you share with your neighbor is he not distributing food to the poor is that not the high point of christianity <laughs> equip struggling believers with skills train them on marketing network marketing forex trading bitcoin equip them is that not the high point <laughs> then you have some churches that are driven with that kind of talk that's why in some churches first service is entrepreneurial service second service is agricultural farming <laughs> you understand <laughs> they buy tractors for the church to, to, to give to brethren to go and farm Say, Kai, that church is a caring church is a caring church. They train you to make money and how to make it in life. Very caring church. See, ah, that is where the real Christianity is. <laughs> they tell you, I must impact my world. How? Agriculture. <laughs> Producing food for the foodless to eat. Then they take all of you to a seminar. <laughs> Where the speaker says, I don't believe in Jesus, but I believe in humanity. I believe in humanity. The last six months, our organization sent 40 million tons of food to Sudan. Three months ago, we brought in face marks, 40 million for Nigeria. I don't believe in Jesus, but I believe in humanity. Right now, we are putting together 40 million dollars to send as relief to brethren in, I mean, no, to, to human beings. <laughs> we have decided to give back to humanity. You know, members of that church will say, wow, this is Christianity indeed. This man has become my new pastor. They believe that people that do that, they are the men of God. You see where the idea is warped? You see where that idea is warped? What the world needs is eternal life through the sacrifice of Jesus. That's why God loves the world. He didn't give us cars. He didn't give us Lamborghinis. He loves the world. He didn't drop down bags of rice in every family. He loves the world. He gave the world the gift of eternal life. Rice, you can farm and produce. Food, you can locate that one by yourself. 
clothes you can manufacture but there's one thing no human being can give is the life of God and that is what God gave to mankind and that's the job of the church to give to men the gift of eternal life through the preaching of the gospel if you're following say I hear you that's the job of the church eternal life no amount of entrepreneurship gives eternal life no amount of indomie noodles can give eternal life no amounts of clothes distributed can give eternal life where men are poor is in their heart men are poor in their heart that's where the poverty is in the heart the poverty of man is beyond food to eat close to where the poverty of man is to be without the spirit of God. Man without the spirit is dead. The poverty of man is to be without the spirit of God. So Dr. Damina, is it wrong to give food to the poor? No, you are not getting the point. Hearing, you are hearing, but you are not hearing. Set your priorities right. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus without the ministry of Jesus. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus without the ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus is what makes you a disciple. What is the ministry of Jesus? The ministry of Jesus is that he preached, he taught, he healed the sick, and he prayed concerning what he preached. He preached, he taught, he prayed for the sick, and he prayed concerning what he preached so that men will believe his preaching and teaching and have eternal life which is the ultimate reason why Jesus came John 10 10 I am come that you may have life and be abundant that you might have life and be abundant life is found in the spirit of a man who believes the gospel. So if you are a disciple of Jesus. That is your focus. There are two places in the world today. Where there is unusual conversion. Into Christianity. Iran and China. That is where the greatest revival is happening right now. In Iran and China. And in these two places. They have the strictest. Stringent condition for worship. It's very difficult to find churches gather. No buildings, no TV lights. Yet, people are getting born again in their millions. Some in the underground. People are getting saved. Why? Because they have decided to preach the gospel Jesus' way. Believers have taken on the ministry of Jesus. Iran, Iraq. And more nations are opening up. To the gospel. More nations. Saudi Arabia. Opening up to the gospel. To reach the world. Is the mandate. How do you reach the world? By reaching the men across your street. That man across your street. Is how you reach the world. People in bus stops. Motor parks. The prostitutes, the street boys, the drug addicts, the dropouts, the bad, those in the byways and the high, highways, people in the hedges, those are the people. You reach out to them. You go to them and preach the gospel. You go to them. One of my sons was telling me, you know, in Accra, he said, when I went to start church, I was busy preaching to believers and um, to people who have gone to churches and they were arguing too much with me. When I go to give them the gospel, they're arguing. Ah, how can you say a Christian can be born again and Jesus has forgiven him and anything he does, he is forgiven. Ah, 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 ah. They were busy. Ah, he said, just told God, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm giving up on these people. I know you have not, but I have given up on all these people. I am going now to look for the drug addict. That he went to these guys that were smoking Igbo. When he got in there, he said, Gentlemen, I just came to share the love of God with you guys. Say, so, uh, okay, wait, let's finish this one way. We started. So finished, okay. Tell us what you came to tell us. He shared the gospel. They sat down, they gave him chair. 
He taught and taught and taught and taught and taught and taught. The reality of the gospel entered them. They knelt down and received Christ. He got them baptized with the Holy Ghost. They started speaking in tongues in the Igbo joint. He cleaned them up. He said, right now, they are committed. They are the first foundation members of his church. They go for evangelism every day. And he said, Papa, since I have been in ministry, nobody has given me money like these boys. Every day, Pastor, are you okay? Take this one. Pastor, are you okay? They, that if they take their own, they must give me my own. He said, I didn't ask them. I didn't have to teach them. He said, so Papa, I have decided all these recycled Christians, I have given up on them. I'm going for raw sinners. I'm going for raw sinners who don't know anything. And he said, these people don't argue. Anything I tell them is final. If I tell them Jesus has died for you, they believe. If I tell them your sins are eternally forgiven, they believe. If I tell them you have eternal life forever, they believe. No argument, no saying, what about one saved? What about uh, uh, eternal saved or not saved? He said, all that nonsense is not there. What I'm teaching them is all they know. They don't know anything other than what I'm telling them. So, and they, they don't know about any other church. They are not looking at any pastor in town. They are not interested because they, all they know where God is concerned is me. I say, I hope you are teaching them the right. He said, everything you teach, I teach them. I say, very good. Teach it right. Sometimes you waste time on people that, that are not serious. There are people that are in the drenches of sin. That a ray of light is all they need. Just a ray of light. You just go close to them and just put the light. All of them will come alive. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Here. We take the gospel there. Go to where people who need Christ are. Don't go to where people already don't need anything. We preach this gospel. We preach this gospel. Praise God. To reach the world is to get across. Look at John 20, 21 as a roundup. John chapter 20 verse 21. Getting blessed? Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Even so send I you. Next verse. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Oh, glory to God. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain... They are retained. What does it mean the father sent me? John 15, 26. John 15, 26. <clears throat> but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. As my Father sent me is the word allos paracletos. That is Christ coming to us in the spirit. Christ coming to live in us in the spirit. As my Father sent me even so send I you. In other words, Jesus tells us the purpose of the new birth or the another comforter is to go to the world and testify of Jesus. That's why he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. How do you forgive people their sins? By preaching. How do you retain people's sins? By not preaching. So the high point of the indwelling of the spirit in the believer is to testify of Jesus. What is the essence of life of right living or living right? Your living right is not to end points with God. You are already righteous. You are already born of his spirit. The essence of living right is because of the gospel you preach. That's why you live right. Because of the gospel you preach. It's not to score points with God. You have his spirit already. And that is all he's ever going to give you. His spirit. As my father has sent me. So send I you. When Jesus rose from the dead. To live in our hearts. He came to live in our hearts. For this cause. To testify of him. All over the world. To testify of him. All over the world. 
You cannot claim to understand and practice Christianity without these elements I am pointing out. We preach the gospel. The spirit of Jesus in you is in you to serve. To serve. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. So Christianity will begin by learning what you are hearing now. This is where we begin Christianity from. Jesus crucified, buried, raised from the dead, now lives in us and begins to do through us the things he did in the four gospels. He is doing through us today the same things he did in the four gospels. So the four gospels have become a pattern for us. A pattern. A pattern for us. Where the spirit of God through us is giving expression to the will of God on the earth. What is the will of God on the earth? Blessed to be a blessing until all the families of the earth be blessed. Glory to God. The gospel of the blessing. We bring Christ and him crucified. We preach him. We preach him everywhere. Discipleship produces in you a heart of service. It produces in you a desire to see others experience what you have experienced. Yesterday I was preaching for the full gospel businessmen in Ghana and I told them, the message that saves you makes a missionary out of you of the same message. It saves you and makes you a messenger of the same. You are saved. In turn, you take the same message. You preach it so others can be saved. Glory to God.